Well, after I named my favorite films of the year yesterday, I will now talk about the ones I really did not enjoy. Here are my 10 least favorite films of the year, starting with a Christmas comedy from somebody whose antics I usually enjoy. The Night Before. I actually find Seth Rogen and his friends quite funny, but this holiday escapade did nothing for me. It was mostly a bunch of dick and wee jokes thrown together with little wit or cleverness to them. It seemed to exist to be crude just for the sake of it. And I'm not a prude. I think dirty jokes can be funny. But there needs to be more variety to it. Even more annoying is when it tries to be sentimental, but it just comes off as forced and obvious. Not even Michael Shannon playing a local drug dealer was enough to get laughs out of me. I like you, Seth Rogen and Jonathan Levine, but you left me disappointed with this one. Every Worst of the Year list has a controversial choice. In this case, my number 9 is one of the biggest blockbuster hits of the year. Furious 7. One modern trend of action movie editing I cannot stand is the need to have the shots last two seconds. I'm not fond of it because I want to watch and appreciate the stunt work, but it's difficult to do that when I have trouble seeing the action. All the car chases and explosive stunts are edited in such a high as if we're going to get bored if the shot lasts more than five seconds. Compare that to something like Kings of the Secret Service or The Force Awakens or Mad Max Fury Road, where the cameraman and editors actually allow you to appreciate all the hard work the stunt people put into the action scenes. Meanwhile, there was a non-story about an evil plot I did not care about, and the odd decision to put The Rock in the hospital through most of the movie. Yes, the tribute at the end was touching, but it was the only genuine moment in a movie filled with noise. Another action movie pops up in my number 8 spot with some of the oddest casting of the year. Dragon Blade. I like Jackie Chan, and I like John Cusack, but that's an odd combination. I like Roman epics and kung fu movies as well. But that's also a strange combination. Well, that's what we get with Dragon Blade. Dull movie with lamely choreographed action and some odd performances from the cast. Chan certainly tries his best, but the material he's handed is just weak. Cusack is completely miscast, and Adrian Brody is doing who knows what as the villain. We are also saddled with one of the worst child performances I've ever seen, and one cheesy and melodramatic scene after another. The war scenes are not exciting, and this just becomes a long and dreary spectacle that frankly wasn't that, well, spectacular. And number seven is a cheesy thriller that would have been better placed in a 2 a.m. time slot on a low-rent cable television network. The Boy Next Door. This movie was just ridiculous. Everyone is hamming it up. There are cliches galore, including a cat jump scare. I didn't realize we still made those. And the characters have no chemistry. We're supposed to believe that Jennifer Lopez sleeps with a younger man suddenly for... reasons. And the plot becomes more and more silly as it goes along. The main antagonist is almost superhuman and gets away with way too much. There are Chekhov's guns galore, and the whole time I'm wondering why this script was approved. Speaking of ridiculously cheesy movies, my number six pick is certainly one of the most stupid horror movies I've seen. The Lazarus Effect. Weirdly enough, this is also from the Jason Bloom Factory. He's actually quite a smart producer which makes me confuse why his script choices are not on par with his financial decisions. But this film, it looks like he had a science lab available to film in, so they quickly cobbled together a script to shoot the film there. The actors are given undeveloped and even unlikable characters to work with, the film's idea of scary is switching the lights on and off, and it seems to forget certain plot points like a reanimated dog. The script is filled with ridiculous sign-speak, and the characters make the most idiotic decisions, even by the usual standards of horror films. The biggest compliment I can give this movie is that it's really short. Get ready, because four of the final five slots are comedies. Yep, it was that kind of year. My number five pick is... Vacation. 
Films like Christmas Vacation and European Vacation were not high-class comedies by any means, but they had enough charm, relatable situations, and likable characters to make them enjoyable. This sequel has none of those things. This family just consists of horrible people, and the writers mostly just throw a bunch of sophomoric gags on the wall hoping they stick. The actors really overact, with only Chris Hemsworth managing to hit the right tone. We're just saddled with one unfunny scene after another, and none of them were enjoyable or funny to me. And when Chevy Chase finally appears as Clark Griswold, I cannot even smile at that. It was just sad. My number four choice is an example of something that should have stayed on the internet. Smosh the movie. I actually think these two are quite talented, and maybe they do have the ability to sustain a full-length feature. But this is not the movie to prove that. It really feels like an overly long YouTube sketch, the point where they even repeat jokes over and over again. Sorry, wasn't funny the first time or the twentieth time you did it. The two of them constantly mug to the camera, and the supporting players don't help elevate the material either. A lot of it is just lame gags that feel like they went through the ringer, and a stupid storyline to boot. While that was a lame attempt at bringing internet people to the film world, number three is a major celebrity trying his hand at moving to one of the most successful streaming platforms in the world. The Ridiculous Six. I defended Adam Sandler not too long ago, saying he has talent and he's shown that as recently as Hotel Transylvania 2. This is Sandler almost actively trying to get people to hate him. It's way too long at two hours, and the jokes are incredibly stupid and, well, non-existent. The ensemble of actors just embarrass themselves, and aside from the score, the movie doesn't even attempt to capture the classic Western feel. I just sat there stone-faced, waiting for something, anything funny to happen, and nothing. I'll stick with Blazing Saddles when it comes to Western comedies, thank you very much. And number two is a horror film featuring almost all the clichés I hate in the genre. The Woman in Black 2, Angel of Death. I really like horror films, but this one really tested my patience with annoying jump scares, characters doing idiotic things, the cliché bullies and spooky child characters, and worst of all, it's just boring. Every scare is seen a mile away, and the mystery is so obvious, and the symbolism thrust right in your face. This is a movie that even with all the warning signs, characters still decide to ignore them. It was a frustrating watch, where I was practically counting down the minutes until it ended. I found this to be a fairly disappointing year for horror films, and this was certainly the worst of the lot. And my number one worst movie of 2015 is Alvin and the Chipmunks The Road Chip. I hated the three previous films, but I thought maybe for once they finally make a worthwhile one. Maybe they make something of quality. But nope, this might just be the worst one of them all. It's the most pandering and annoying of family films, with toilet humor galore, forced pop culture references, irritating characters, and a movie that so desperately wants to push your heartstrings. We also have Tony Hale chewing the scenery so much, I began to appreciate David Cross's performance in the first three. And every time I saw Jason Lee, I thought to myself, hang in there buddy, Morat's 2 is almost here. It's also poorly edited, and features the chipmunks at the most annoying. My final word, please let this be the last one. I don't think my ears can take any more of that high-pitched singing. Ugh. See you next time.